So. And Gus, go with the theme song. Hey, everyone. It's a podcast. Boom, 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 podcast. Dot com. Wow, you got help on yours. Jeff yeah. just joined in. <laughs> I love little Gus. A little instrumental. Hey, okay. it's Gus here with the Rooster Teeth Podcast and two other assholes. Boop, boop. Yeah, this week we, we don't have Joel with us. He's out in the front room. I think Joel's mad because we. He, I don't think he likes the character we're establishing for him. Well, in that case, let me continue that on by saying that uh, Joel came into the office very frazzled this morning at about 9.30 or so <laughs> because he'd been working on a project file in Final Cut the previous night and, in his words, saved it over a million times but then couldn't find it. And he assured me that he named it something 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 dash Joel. And that it was on RAID 5. And it took me about 20 minutes of him fretting before I found it saved on a local drive in a folder for a different game that didn't have his name or any identifying marks on it whatsoever. I don't know how I found it, but uh, it was pretty funny. I realized that Joel has was completely befuddled by the idea of where to save something or what to call it. RAID 5 is our network drive that we use to record most of our audio or video footage that we do for different projects, so... I really like that piece of equipment because it's got, like, this, like, array of hard drives on it. You can click them and pull them out one by one. But the coolest thing about it is that they're all freezing cold, even though everything else is hot. I don't know how they do that. Yeah, it's really weird. It's kind of like that, kind of like in 2010, when they got to go to HAL and try to remove the certain points of them. You know what I'm talking about? Those are Mm. crystals. (laughs) Yeah, that was was pretty different. Same kind of thing. (laughs) Like, push a button and shit comes out. It was 2001 also, wasn't it? I was talking about 2010. Okay. Uh, also, ours has... With John Lithgow. <laughs> uh, he, Jeff's experience with 2001 are the flashback scenes from 2010, <laughs> basically. All right. Uh, so what are we going to talk about this week? Do you guys want to like go outside of our comfort zone and talk about something that could be spoilerish and talk about Lost? Because the Lost season finale was... Last night? Last night for us, yeah. Well, yeah fuck it. Why not? By the time this comes out tomorrow, it will have appeared everywhere, right? I mean, right. And what, it's aired. It's over. I'll give you a, there was so much to talk about. Um, I I don't actually watch Lost, but I read it <laughs> on Wikipedia. He reads about it, and then <laughs> I have to tell him about it the day after like, well, the he, he fills in. Because, well, the problem is we got five episodes behind, and my wife refuses to let me catch up. I don't know what it is. But uh, she won't. She wants to watch a new episode, but she refuses to watch an old episode. But we can't get to the new episodes till we get through the old episodes. It's just retarded, I know. But so I just read about Lost now. But anyway, the point is, well, well, it was such an epic episode that Gus came in this morning, and I wanted to talk about it with him because I'd read about it on Wikipedia. And we went downstairs, and we got coffee because we didn't want to spoil it for Nathan. Jeff is shot out of a can. Like I am. This. Well, it's, <laughs> I'd say it's morning. I haven't had any beer for lunch or anything. I'm still awake. So we went downstairs, and we got coffee. And then we walked all the way from the coffee shop to my wife's place of work, which is like 10 blocks away because I forgot my memory card, and she brought it to work. And then all the way back, and then we went to the conference room, and we sat in the conference room for 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And that was all just Gus giving his synopsis of the episode. Well, well one of the great things that, and I, I, we need to write this down so that we can give a link uh, associated with the podcast, but we found those Lost Untangled videos that apparently oh, ABC puts out and doesn't promote and no one's ever heard of. Yeah, each video has like 6,000 views on YouTube, but they are tremendous. No, no, no. each video has like 500 views on YouTube. Oh, I saw it's like a, five, 6, it's like a but... five minute synopsis of a Lost episode using stick figures and a comic book style but isn't it done by abc yeah it's yeah. done by abc and they only have they only like the the video with the most views has twenty two thousand views most of their videos have like 500 to 800 views and what is it it's just like a five minute synopsis of every lost video uh every lost episode that's it's very like comic book style meets greatest episode ever like stick figures mm-hmm. and acting it out well now is it is it done by the producers of Lost or is it just done by the network? I don't it's I, done by the network it seems like. It's pretty hilarious. But it's too. it's pretty well done and it's pretty faithful to uh to the episode. It gets all the major points across and manages to be funny and really really entertaining. Yeah. All right. So is the rule now if something is out there it's okay to talk about it. Like it's fair game. Yeah. We're going to warn people right now. We're going to talk about it, and yeah. they, they can they can they can stop listening. And I don't know. I mean, I, I have no idea. We'll assume we're going to be talking about this for fifteen minutes, maybe at yeah. the most. So if you want to fast forward fifteen, I guess you can do at that. At fifteen minutes and five seconds, I'm going to shot the biggest spoiler I can. <laughs> but, but you know the the weird thing about it is that it, people get so uptight about spoiler stuff for stuff they have yet to watch that's been out there for. I mean, really, should be the point at which it comes out. That's the point at which people can talk about it, right? Right, and then if you haven't seen it, you have to. It's your duty to remove yourself. 
from the public. Well, case in point, or not I, get uh, upset about it because you didn't care enough right. about it to watch it. So when we filmed the spoiler alert video, I had never seen there will be blood, and that totally like the milkshake line totally spoiled the movie for me. But the movie's been out for two years; it's my fault. Yeah, you know, it's I don't, I don't the, begrudge anyone. It was more <laughs> the, the bowling pin, that the yeah. bowling pin, <laughs> whatever that whole scene. <laughs> Then the milkshake thing. I don't know who he kills, but now I know when I finally watch the movie, I'm going to know. Yeah, man. It's, cra- it's crazy when you see those big performance movies like that, and you think, like, they're going to be huge, and then they just, like, turn out to be, like, you never talk about them again. Yeah. Like, we saw The Wrestler. I God mean, that seemed damn. like such a fantastic movie, but it didn't win Best Picture. It didn't win Mickey Rourke and Oscar, and then it's just like, then what happens with that movie? It's like, it's not really, like, nobody's... I don't see people going out and, like, screaming out to buy The Wrestler DVD. Is it even out? On right. It's I, think probably, it, I think it just came out. Yeah, probably not going to make AFI's top 100 films of all time. But, but what an it, awesome it, movie! It, it, what it an helped, awesome movie! It's helping la- relaunch uh, Mickey Rourke's career, yeah. giving him more work. He plays the Crimson Dynamo in the new Iron Man movie. Yes, he does, which is awesome. You know, Gary Shandling is in the new Iron Man movie too. Yeah, oh. I know. I didn't know that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, the problem with Iron Man is if you go too deep in Iron Man, you start to have to put in villains, and there's no villains in no. the Iron Man that's, series. That's a big problem with a lot of things. Star Trek doesn't have good villains either, aside from, like, Khan, I guess. I would argue that Khan's not a good villain if you go back to I mean, he's the only watch. memorable one, really. Yeah. Can you name another, like, Star Trek movie villain? So, what was the path we took here? From our spoilers of Lost <laughs> to, to now Star we're Trek. talking about Mickey Rourke being the Crimson Dynamo <laughs> and Star Trek villains. <laughs> oh, man. Next, we're going to be talking about stuff for sale on QVC or something like that. Okay, so talk about Lost. You you apparently liked it. Uh-oh. Telephone. Is this a call? Maybe. We want, nope. Not a call. We want to answer. Okay. Um, did, did you see Lost? Let, let's, let's start with this. I did see Lost. Did you like it? Um, Listen, the, I thought the best season finale for Lost was season three when Jack with crazy beard, I like dudes with crazy beards, first of all, but that's the moment when they switch from doing flashbacks to doing present day or flash forwards in that particular case. They, they, they switch from the, what we've been watching all along to those flashbacks to this new thing they were doing, and it felt like a payoff for everything that you'd seen so far. Mm-hmm. Like you had this really cool moment of, oh, they're not flashing back. They're showing that these people are off the island. We've been watching it the whole time. That was, to me, that was fantastic. Season four, they introduced the people parachuting onto the island. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that set up the Miles characters and the, like the Faraday character. Most of those people are dead now, except for Miles. This one felt just like the season four one to me, where they all of a sudden introduce people we've never seen before. Uh, they're kind of based on what we know about the island, and they're setting up what's really going to happen in season five or the final season or whatever. Season six. Season six, and they're setting all that stuff up. And mm-hmm. I, and I had the feeling while I liked it a lot. I had a feeling that they were setting up the final season of Lost, which to me feels like it's going to be a very great season that's going to feel inspired by the popular series Lost. Like, I don't think that anything that we've gone with all along is going to be anything more than a prologue to what's about to happen. Gotcha. That's how I feel. Hmm. Like, they introduced Jacob a long time ago, and... I mean, even Ben, like, kind of diminutized Jacob by saying he was making up the fact that he couldn't see him. Uh, before and now Richard, who is this guy on the island, who to me was the most mysterious guy that we knew the most about, he apparently knows nothing now. I mean, like he wanders around in the jungle not knowing anything, <laughs> knowing less than Locke knows. You know. Well, that was the payoff, though, was that it wasn't actually Locke who knew all this stuff. Yeah. Right. The, the island Locke who came back. Right. Is that... is not John Locke. It's this counterpart to Jacob. Right. Now, that's now. why he knows more than Albert. Okay, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Richard Alpert knows less than Locke. But what does he know? I mean, what is, all we know about Richard Alpert know that he seems, he seems to have confidence in now is that Jacob made him the way he is. But he just seems like a he's, guy. He's, he's an advisor. That's what they said. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that he doesn't... I don't think he wanders around you know, like an idiot. I think he does know a lot about the island. He just doesn't say it or he doesn't talk about it. Listen... I'm just bitter because they killed Juliet. <laughs> I can't tell you how bitter I am. Well, it, I, I don't think she's dead, though. Like, at the end, when they had the eye opening and it said lost in 2010, that yeah. was her eye. Okay, I can see that. You know, but then, I mean, she could be... I mean, is John Locke dead? But he's still in the show. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, technically, the character of John Locke is now dead. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, Juliet is... She's one of the best things on television because whether <laughs> she's in... Whether she's in marooned on an island or stuck backwards in time in the 70s, she can always find a low-cut top. <laughs> she, it doesn't matter. Like Dharma must the Dharma must have a stockpile of like low cut halter tops. 
for her to wear. It's incredible. And <laughs> when, then they kill her. Whenever, uh, lots of times I'm out in public with my wife, and I'm always pointing out women like, God, doesn't that woman look a lot like Juliet from Lost? Like, God, doesn't that woman look a lot like Juliet from Lost? My wife's like, you're, you're in love with her, aren't you? You're totally obsessed with Juliet. Everyone looks like her to you. And I was like, yeah. She's probably the hottest woman on television. She's pretty hot. Yeah. And then they, they, they offer. But I, that's the way I feel. I just feel like I want everything that I've invested in so far to be something more than a prologue, but I don't, I don't after the last night's episode, I don't think it's going to be that way. Hmm. You know, and they had like this kind of weird, like they had this kind of weird thing where uh, at the end of the episode, you know, how they cut the black with the lost, they cut to white, yeah, right. black lost on it, and that was like, ooh, look, we're changing things up, and I was like, oh no, I mean, that didn't that didn't have the same feeling to me that them being off the island, like I always thought the premise going back to season one, I thought the premise of the show is them getting off the island or discovering what the island was about, and we've already been to them getting off the island. And that just didn't seem to matter at all. Like, it was irrelevant to get off the island. Because I think they realized that that's not what they were supposed to do. I guess not. Yeah. You know, and even people who, like, went through all this trouble to get off the island, it didn't seem like a big deal to them either. Like, Michael and Walt. You know, like, Walt especially. It's like, he was such an important character. And then this season, you kind of, like, run into him on a city block, like a guy you used to know or work with. And it's like, oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, that the island thing was crazy. See ya. And it's like, okay, I guess Walt really wasn't that important, ever. Yeah, the Walt thing is really weird. It seems like they were really building that up, like he was special. Or and that also, the Walt thing and Aaron being evil yeah, or something like that, right? That was an old thing from season one or two? Well, I mean, you could do it with any of those characters. Like, what happened to Claire? Claire's just, she's gone. Well, she, she's dead. She's with, she, dead. She, she's, yeah, I thought she died and she's with Christian Shepard now. How did she die? No, she just went. She just with them. She, she never walked died. off in the in the woods one night. She hmm. left the camp, and Hurley was like, Claire just walked out of the, into the woods in the middle of the night, and hmm. then she wasn't seen again until she was in the cabin with Christian Shepherd, who, you know, we always assumed was Jacob or working with Jacob, but now, based on what I read, he could be the other dude. Yeah, and and, and here's that could because like Jacob abandoned that that uh, cabin because the the dust was broken. I guess yeah. the line was broken, and so. That entire time we saw Claire and all that stuff, and Christian Shepherd through this whole thing could be the bad guy. When they found uh, Jack Shepherd, when they found Christian Shepherd's coffin, yeah, the one that Jack brought mm-hmm. on the plane, was it empty? It was empty. So now that's a big deal. I mean, that's something they set up way back then that you know Christian's coffin was empty, and he's walking around the island apparently, but as a ghost. But like the reveal of like John not being in his body, everything is so up in the air when somebody comes back to life. I don't ne- that didn't necessarily be like, oh my god, that's not John. Even though I knew that's exactly what they were going for. Right. You know? Like, well, if he's out here dead, who's in there? You know? But it's like, who's to say that it's not John? You know? Just because he's not in his body. Well, now, now, now you're overthinking it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just like... Didn't Richard Alpert say that Jacob couldn't bring people back from the dead or that he had well, no, no He idea. said he had never seen that. Never seen that before. And the two times it's happened, it's been kind of weird. And one time it was obviously not Jacob but the other guy. So can't we just assume that that's the power that the dark clothes guy has? I, I don't know. I, re- I mean, I really don't know. And now now we got this, like, battle between these two people. Like, they were – to me, they were introducing enough stuff, like, layers with Ben and – um oh, what's the guy's name? The the Australian dude. Desmond? No, no, no. The, 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 the puppeteer guy. Whitmore? Yeah, Whitmore. They were introducing those layers of, like, a higher-level battle with those guys. Now they're going another level. Yeah. Like, if they add another level at the in the middle of next season, is that going to be okay? You well, know, it's just like, at what point are we – Following the characters we started off with, and these are the people who are discovering stuff about the island. It's just like another level, another level, another level. You know well, I, mean? I think we finally. Re- it seems like we finally reached the top level. Like people who've been alive for hundreds of years and are really overseeing everything. Right, but that's who I thought Richard was. But Richard doesn't know anything. Oh, Richard never. And I never got the impression Richard oversaw anything. He always. He was never the leader. He was always like a liaison. Yeah, an advisor. Okay. But, I mean, when it was set up before, I mean, it's he was with the others, and we didn't know much about him. He recruited Ben, and we thought Ben was the leader of the others, and then we have this Richard guy, but then Richard's not the leader. He appoints the leader, which is a position that then talks to Jacob, who is a guy on the island and lives in a tow. You know? I just... <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I don't want to be negative because I, I did like the episode. I just don't know what we're going to see next season. Mm. You know what I mean? But I definitely, I definitely feel like it's going to feel like inspired by Lost, as opposed to being like a payoff. Like I think the season three finale was a, was a payoff of everything we've been invested in. You know, mm-hmm. it's just going to be like, oh, this is a good story based on what we've kind of shown you already before. That's how I think season the next season is going to roll. That I really do. Awesome. <laughs> really looking forward well, I look, to it. I look, I look forward to it, regardless. Yeah. So. 
It's a shame it's 2010. That's not that far away, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that's like six months away at this point. Wow. When is it? I mean, 2010 is May they're going to start it? They, they always say it was 2010. So they'll probably start. They started in February this year, I think, right? Yeah, it was like late yeah. January, early February. Yeah. Uh, Remember when TV used to start in September and go till like April or May? Well, that's cool now. It's just the way it's just the way stuff rolls now. With uh, you know, they got to compete with the internet and everything else. So what can yeah. You do? Okay. Uh, enough about Lost, though. I mean, what you, so you really loved it, I think. Uh, I thought it was okay. There was some stuff in it I really liked, but uh, there was eh, I thought it was kind of. I thought it could have been a little shorter. It, felt, it dragged on a little, I felt. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's two hours, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's a tough thing where if they produce 22 hours of, basically, I mean, a movie's two hours, so they have a tw- they have basically 11 movies they make uh, every season, and you think about how much information that they, if, if you went, if you sat through 11 movies and they gave you as little information as a season of Lost gives you, you'd be like, fuck this, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to see well, the next movie, I'm the, not going back. I mean, I almost quit Lost during season one because of that. I did like, quit, it was, yeah. there was It was going so slow and there was such little information. There were like two or three times where it's like, if this episode's not great, I'm going to stop watching. And those episodes were good. I was like, okay, I'm going to give it one more week. Yeah, those, were the, week. those were the episodes you convinced me to come back because I quit around like yeah. episode 12. I was like, this is retarded. Yeah. Well, they, like it's like they do they do that now where it's like they fall into their own pattern of give like they do the reveal of some mysterious piece of information that they're going to fill in later, or like maybe a, a, they give you a little bit more like step towards that, and then they play that dramatic music. But now they're doing that on stuff you already know, like when Eloise is telling you because he's my son. It's like yeah, we know that we've known that for like. <laughs> Five episodes now. Why are they playing dramatic music when she reveals that Daniel Faraday is her son? We get it, you know? I guess maybe it's for her benefit, the music, you know? So she can feel important. <laughs> but, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I have I have very, very high hopes. I have very, very high yeah, hopes. As, as do I. Yeah. And maybe one day Jeff will start watching I again also. I cannot wait to read next season. <laughs> I'm very excited. You know, I will, you know, Felicity, my other favorite J.J. Abrams series, never made it past the time travel <laughs> season. <laughs> so this one is going to be like maybe the, the uh, fulfillment of that, and we'll see like what he does after the time travel stuff. Do you think they'll be back now what in you... their regular time? Mm, yes. But I don't think that... It's going to work like they thought it was. I don't think they'll be landing in LAX. All right. Well, I, I just felt like we need to talk about it, <laughs> the lost thing. Do you don't, you're not really saying that much, though, Gus. Do you want to say anything else about it? Um, oh, I, I don't know. It's hard. Uh, I wish I wish I hadn't talked to Jeff about it this morning. I had a lot to say, and I've already been through it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I talked to people on AIM last night, like people I know who are on the site that messaged me about it, and they all seem to say that they thought it was fantastic. And I, whatever they saw that was fantastic, I didn't, I didn't see it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I guess... I guess the Jacob thing is uh, very important to them. You know what I mean? And, and they bought into it completely. So I, I was very frustrated with Juliet changing her mind every five minutes about what to do. Yeah, it drives me crazy. And seemingly unmotivated. Yeah. Seemingly totally unmotivated. And like even the characters on screen are saying, why do you keep... And why is she? Why are we listening to her after, after changing her mind like, every ten seconds? Why is she driving this thing? So, so what's next on the list? All right, let's see how far into this. I'm getting lost at Alex, actually. I know. I hear you, man. All right, so that's uh, we actually are twenty minutes in, so I'll have to Good Lord. the fuck out of that. While uh, while Bernie's looking at that, I will point out that Finch just wanted to thank me for the last podcast. Uh, we never mentioned Wow the entire time, which I guess is the first podcast we haven't talked about Wow. Oh shit, we just time so to talk about Wow. We could roll into Wow if you'd like. Well, you just you just mentioned Wow. They just announced for Wow that they're going to be giving out at BlizzCon a new pet. Uh, the the vanity pet this year is Grunty. The, it's a a Murloc in Starcraft Space Marine armor <laughs> with a, a little plasma rifle. That's cute. Yes, and Gus has spent like I, most I, of your I, day I, yesterday I, I trying spent, to figure out how I to get it. I spent a long time trying to figure out how to get this without actually going to BlizzCon. Because going to BlizzCon, it's like a $150 ticket, and it's also in Anaheim. So, you know, you'd have to buy a, a plane ticket to go out there. Because you need to go out there and physically be there to get the bag with the stupid little card in it. Hey, um, it looks like we've... Up. Computer locked up. Oh, okay, okay, you're good. Uh, so you have to go out. You actually have to go out to Anaheim and we're, get we're, the bag. I want to point out we're recording on a Mac. They don't lock up. Like, I've seen the ads. Okay, it was cu- it was queued. Um, <laughs> so I, I figured out that you can if you pay forty dollars and you're a Directv subscriber, you can get like a live BlizzCon feed and you get the pet that way. Or if you're not a Directv subscriber, you can still pay forty bucks and watch it on your computer like an internet stream, and you also get the pet that way. So is that what you're gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna pay forty dollars <laughs> and uh, get the pet. You're paying forty dollars for that vanity pet. You know, I, you I, probably... you, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. I might buy. I might pay forty dollars several times to get a couple. <laughs> you gonna try and sell them? Maybe. They you think you're going to be the only person that has that idea? 
uh, they still sell for a lot of money. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll see. Like the the murky I got from year one of BlizzCon, uh, I still see go for like twelve hundred bucks on eBay. But that was year one. We're at year of what the else? the the pet from last year, which I believe was a polar bear mount with a murloc with a BlizzCon flag. I think you can can buy that for six hundred bucks <laughs> on eBay. So Holy everybody shit. reading this, everybody reading this podcast, go buy as many. M- Fucking grunties as you can. Yeah, and if you're, <laughs> read, if you're reading down. an audio podcast, please contact me and let me know how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hire somebody who can read waveforms. Yeah, maybe that's what they're doing. <laughs> All right, what else is going on? Now that we're done talking about the WoW section of our podcast. Uh, we're coming back to WoW later. Don't we, worry about uh, it. Oh, we, you and I filmed something yesterday, a live action thing. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's probably something we'll put out just for sponsors, though, I think. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Right, we, we did a test with, we shot with in a unique way, and I'm still working with it a little bit, but I, I, I don't think... Technically, it's up to the quality of our other stuff, so yeah. that might be a sponsor thing. So you should probably look for that either later on Thursday or early on Friday. Um, and then, what else? Oh, oh, you guys were getting on me a little bit. You guys always like to get on me about like Gus apparently is spying on my game playing habits. Like, oh he, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he watches. He watches <laughs> what I do. Like when he saw that I was kind of playing WoW, he started looking at my achievements and like tracking me. And then he saw I was playing Fallout Three, and I made the comment that. I didn't think Fallout 3 was really all that great, and so then he started tracking me to see that I was still playing it even after well, I no, said it was great. I was great. playing Fallout, and like I would, I would look at my blade, I would see you're online, and it tells me like Bernie Burns, level five citizen, <laughs> wandering the wandering the wasteland, <laughs> level five citizen. Yep. Okay. Well, here's the thing about Fallout that kind of caught me off guard. Fallout is basically Oblivion. Same company, same well, kind of game. <laughs> Well, that's a, I mean, the, Blizzard makes a lot of different games. You don't actually just pick up and play the same game. I mean, it's it's literally Oblivion, but with a sci-fi theme. That's what it is. Hmm. I mean, it feels to me like a skin game. In fact, I was going to show you, um, you know, but I don't have the disc here with me today. Like, when you go to talk to somebody for the first time, it's that menu-driven conversation stuff, of course. But it does that thing, like, when you go to talk to them and it zooms in on their face, mm-hmm. just like Oblivion. It feels just like Oblivion. Really? You know how in Oblivion you can wait? And you can specify, like, wait for five hours or wait for six hours so you can get past the night. Yeah. It's like you accidentally hit wait and then selected 2,000 years. And you woke up and you were in Oblivion. <laughs> you know, you're in a wasteland. I mean, am I wrong? Have you played Oblivion? Yeah. Yes. And I, I, I could definitely see that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of similarities. But, I mean, you could say any RPG is like that. You can wait in any RPG. I mean, so the camera movement zooms in on people when you talk to them. It's just the overall I feel. I mean, Mass Effect is the same way. It has that menu-driven conversation. You talk to someone and you see it like that. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's like, when I pick up ODST and play ODST, I'm expecting it to feel like Halo. When I pick up and play Battlefield, it's an FPS, but it doesn't feel like Halo. It doesn't, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not... A genre can be different. This feels like Oblivion. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you play, when you wander around stuff, the waiting stuff is all... It's all the same. Yeah, I guess the... the, the, I can totally see what you're saying, and I agree with you to an extent. The problem I have with it is that I hated Oblivion so much, I hate admitting <laughs> the fact that I like a game that's like Oblivion. Okay. Yeah, I was not a fan of Oblivion either. Oblivion and Morrowind are terrible. I said it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm saying I don't I'm like I'm going to get hate mail. I, I know, that's why. Well, you, those games hey, are terrible. Not to, not to change subjects from this gripping conversation, uh, but... You mentioned Battlefield. Gus and I watched the trailer for Battlefield 1943 this oh, morning. We have, we have more Fallout. Oh, are you still ta- got yeah, Fallout to get there? Still going. What else would you like to talk about in Fallout? Uh, well, I'm curious if it's like Oblivion in the sense does does Oblivion put out DLC that's constantly broken as well? Ooh. Because it seems like it seems like Fallout 3. Have they had a release? Yet? No, they're they're three for three. Three for three. Wow, that's rough. Yeah, they're... actually, you could consider it more than that too because e- their PC stuff has been broken as well on that DLC yep. front in different ways than the Xbox. Yep. How so? The Broken, I think it was broken steel DLC on the PC wouldn't play because of a DRM issue. Oh, great. Yeah. And on the Xbox, it was different. You could play it, but the achievements wouldn't unlock when you got them. Really? Yep. How did they solve that? If you uh, patch. And did you, how, would you unlock the achievements or did you have to go back and play it again? again? I don't know. Yeah, see, that's always the problem when achievements are broken. Man, it sucks. It sucks. And I hate DRM stuff. I, it's one of those things where I'm 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 not a pro piracy guy. Obviously, we kind of live in the model where we give our stuff away for free and ask for you know basically donations or people support it. But man, when DRM stuff comes up, it just drives me crazy, crazy when that stuff comes up because I'm one of those people who buys. I buy all my stuff. I don't download anything. And so like you know, Spore not being able to install on more than two machines or just not even be able to make backups of my you know my DVDs like legitimately it just drives me fucking nuts. Yeah. Plus, Spore also has that additional thing where you have to log in. Or you, like, you have to make that EA yeah. account. It's dumb. It was terrible. I had a fucking thing on Age of Booty not too long ago. Age of Booty? Yeah. Yeah. Where uh, I was 
all the way through to the last mission. There's seven missions in the game, and you do them three times. You do easy, medium, and hard. And I was on 21, number 21, which was the last mission on hard. And I was in the process of playing and about to beat it, and my internet died. And I got disconnected from the internet, and the game popped up and said, you're playing a trial version, and deleted my saved game. And I lost 100% of my progress. Wow. Wow, that's rough. It was horrible. I was just gone. I couldn't get it back. Another problem I've seen with Xbox Live Arcade that can be a problem is that if you're playing the trial game, and you buy the trial game when it prompts you, like, oh, you've reached the end of level one, if you buy the full game, you can unlock these achievements. And you buy the game, always restart your Xbox. Because I've had it before where I've played trial, and i played like through the first five or six levels of a game, and then it just, because I started it as a trial, it doesn't save them. Yep. So I, I'd stay away from that in general. That sucks, man. It does suck, yeah. Because it was like a couple days worth of work. Now, you know? were you playing it on the console that you purchased it on? Yes. Really? I, I believe so, yeah. Because that's a big deal for the Xbox DRM, is that you don't um, have to be online to, to play on something if you purchase it on that console. It's possible that I had purchased it in the office for a video and then was playing it at home, but I'm pretty sure I purchased it at home. I yeah. think you actually purchased it at the office, Maybe if I, I remember did. properly. But regardless, I, like, I, man, I don't think you, we, that anyone else has the problems we have with multiple Xboxes, uh, because I have, at home, I have three Xboxes. Yeah, no I joke. Have, I have four. And yeah. here, I've got three that I work on on a regular basis. I have this one right here that we do Red versus Blue on. I have the one out there in the, in the main room. And then I've got Chicken Mouth that I play yeah. on too. We, we've yeah. also, <laughs> and we also have a unique problem in that any time one of those re Xboxes red rings, and I have to call support or try to get a ticket open for them, you know, who knows what name it's under? Right. Like <laughs> I read them the serial number, like, oh, I don't show this is under your name. I'm like, I know it's we have it in an office. Like I can't help you if it's not in your name. Is it under Michael Burns? No. Uh -huh. I have to go through everyone's name in the office. Yeah. I, and there's not many people that have a like office need, business need for Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a pretty rare thing that we have. Yeah, and I think they think I'm trying to pull some kind of scam on them and because they're like, oh, well, why isn't your name on this Xbox? I'm like, I don't know, dude. We have like 30 of them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, uh-huh, sure. Right, yeah. <laughs> We're going from a pawn shop. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is like when I talk to people about like just the way I manage my Xbox stuff, I'm always amazed that not everybody has a memory card. Like, I couldn't imagine having an Xbox and not having a memory card to go with it. Absolutely. It just makes no sense. Like, my gamer tag is not on any console. It's just on a memory card that's right. constantly in my pocket or in my briefcase. Mm -hmm. so. Plus, we, uh, uh, yeah, we we travel a bit more like and play Xbox while we're traveling a bit more than most people. <laughs> He's about to flip out. <laughs> I got fucked! I got fucked by Knuckles Dawson because he came down <laughs> to visit us. He came down to visit us. <laughs> What's going on? He... <laughs> Since I discovered this the other day. Oh, my God. <laughs> He, uh, Knuckles comes down to visit us, and he's one of those dirty Canadians, right? <laughs> so he comes down to just visit us, and he is, you know, Knuckles, God bless him, is an Xbox Live ambassador, or what's his name? Uh, Microsoft MVP. MVP yeah. He's a Microsoft MVP for, like, service to Microsoft. So he gets, oh, he gets all the shit, basically, that we don't get. You know what I mean? Everything, like, an early copy of a Microsoft game, whatever, they send it to Knuckles. And one of the things that he got was he got, like, a month beforehand... He got the new Xbox experience, the oh, new right, dashboard. Right. And so he brought it down. He goes, hey, do you want to try it out? And you can, like, make your avatar and change your gamer tag. I said, yeah, I'll give it a try. So I throw my memory card in his machine. His Canadian machine. His Canadian Xbox, which he had brought down. So now I was registered as playing on a Canadian Xbox. So now my account is flagged in this kind of weird pseudo-cheater realm where I played for, like, two hours in Canada, then played an hour later in the U.S., so I my 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 gamer score is now suspect according to what mygamercard.net Bernie Fuck those guys. Bernie has an asterisk next to his name an asterisk like fucking Barry Bonds I mean <laughs> give me a fucking break Wait, that so, if there was strip club DJ so is it is this Son like of a whore. is this like a Microsoft thing or just a mygamercard.net if it's just mygamercard.net fuck it who gives a shit I well yeah I don't give a shit but fuck <laughs> oh he gives I, a shit I still, I still don't like having the goddamn asterisk anybody that looks name. at that website and uh, one would assume a lot of people do. We'll see that uh, Bernie Burns is potentially a cheater. Potentially a cheater. Suspect. Suspect. <laughs> my, my reputation has been sullied. That's, that's shitty, man. That's really yeah. shitty. All right, what's the chance that this thing's going to recover? We from are this all crash? looking at a pinwheel right what, now. What did you click on? I just clicked to clear the uh, the high. Uh... Why would you do that? <laughs> or, why, or as why? Joel says, the beach ball. <laughs> <laughs> Joel calls when me. I was trying to diagnose this problem earlier this morning, he was like, it was beach balling all night last night. And, I don't uh, know Jeff, why. Jeff had to ask me what that meant, and I was like, I'm pretty sure he means the pinwheel. <laughs> yeah, that's something they don't put in the commercials for the Mac, is that when you use a Mac, you get this spinning, colory pinwheel, Yeah. and you get it all the fucking yeah. time. Day one, after Jeff got his Mac, and he was setting up his MacBook, 
his MacBook Pro, I was like, you're going to learn to hate that fucking pinwheel. Yeah, he goes, congratulations on finally getting a Mac. You're going to love it. going to hate the pinwheel. Well, it's the equivalent of the hourglass yeah. in Windows if you don't use a Mac. And the hourglass does occasionally come up. You know? I mean, the blue screen of death comes up way more than the, uh, than, the, than the hourglass does. But the pinwheel on a Mac comes up constantly. The good news is the Mac seems to be able to recover from the, whatever this weird stalling state is on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, the hourglass on a PC is the pre-crash notice. Right. Typically. It's like, your, your application is quit responding. Not, <laughs> Say goodbye to your work. Not so much with the Mac. Um, so what we're talking about? Oh, yeah, gamer score. Yeah, well, speaking of gamer score, I um, I finally broke ten thousand gamer score last night. And what was the game that you broke ten thousand gamer score with? Fallout Three. Really? Mm-hmm. So, like, what's been like of all the games you've played? And by the way, congratulations on that horrible score. Yeah. But what is your biggest game that you've played? Like, would you have a thousand points in Halo Three? I think I have like nine ninety in Halo Three. Yeah, you do. You, I think you're missing Overkill. Yeah, I need yeah, to. I'm not gonna get that. I no. need. To get a thousand in Halo Three before I go much further in Fallout Three, because I think I'm getting close to a thousand points in Fallout Three. Well, okay. you, you speaking of achievements in Fallout Three, you have an achievement I don't have. I played one quest tree, basically. Blood ties. I didn't get that. I fucked that one up. What'd you do? You killed everybody. Uh, long story. I okay. Never mind. The, the, <laughs> I'll, I'll give the brief version. You know the sheriff of that town? Yes. I set up a mine in the defensive position because we were getting attacked by Myra lurks. Yeah. A Myra lurk stepped on the mine. Shrapnel hit the sheriff. The sheriff turned hostile and assumed I was attacking him. Ah. And so the whole town became hostile to me, and I couldn't complete any quests in there anymore. Oh, that's, you know, that happens sometimes, you yep. know? That's the, uh, the, the really delicate relationships in any RPG. Yeah, and like, I, I, I couldn't, I hadn't saved for like an hour and a half, and I didn't want to go back and load an hour and a half old save just to complete that quest. I said, fuck it. I can't, that game, it's, I, I couldn't start playing it because it's so scary. I was talking about... Uh, the game with Finch Lynch yesterday, who told me he has 181 hours in the game and has identified 50 locations he hasn't been to yet. Well, like, he said that he had played a 120-hour game, his Xbox died, and his save got corrupted. So he started a fresh game, and he's, like, over 60 hours into that one. And speaking of which, I just got that Explorer perk last night that he was talking about. And if you get this Explorer perk, you can get it at level 20. It unlocks all the areas on the map. So you can see every location. It sounds massive, though. Yeah, and I realize that I've been to maybe 25% of the map. Maybe. That's, yeah, that's I believe this. I believe that. It's a, it's, it's a lot of walking. But they do do a cool thing in Fallout 3 where once you've discovered an area, you can just warp to it. Right. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that is, not, yeah. <laughs> that is yeah, nice. Otherwise, it would, the game you, would be unbearable. You get mounts in Fallout 3 later? Because no. I see them sitting around. I see, like, motorcycles and stuff. No. Okay, I guess you don't need them. But. No. You can, when you play the pit, you can get on, like, a, a, a railroad handcart. And that's how you get to the pit. Yeah, that sounds fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Railroad now, that, now that we're back on Fallout 3 again, <laughs> I'm going to try and preempt it and talk about Battlefield 1943. One last again. thing I want to talk about uh, Fallout 3. Last yeah. thing, last thing, last thing. <laughs> I, won't, I won't, give he up. He won't let you. He won't let you. <laughs> so uh, I saw this morning that the Fallout trilogy, like the original games, made it back into the NPD top 10 PC game sales. So th- Since when? Like 1994? Yeah, those games came out in... I guess Fallout 2 probably came out in 97, if I had to take a guess. So, And I think Fallout came out in 95 or 96. So does the trilogy include Fallout 3? No, it's Fallout, Fallout 2, and... One of the one of the lesser-known games. Like, they had a couple of other smaller spin-offs. It's one of those other ones. Oh, okay. Hmm. Fascinating. So- uh, so it's uh, so because of Fallout, th- <laughs> you know, I mean, Fallout Three didn't even just come out. Fallout Three came out six months ago. Because of Fallout Three DLC, they're selling old games now. That is true. An old game has sold enough to break it into the top ten of PC game sales. Fallout Two PC game sales are so dead that there's just nothing left to buy. I would probably argue that the trilogy is now available simply because n- you can't pirate it anywhere. You know, I mean, and it's mm-hmm. and it's and it's going up on the sales chart because people are just like seeing it in the store and saying, "Oh, it's twenty bucks or whatever." Probably, yeah, yeah it's like fifteen or twenty bucks. Uh, yeah, the copies I own of Fallout and Fallout Two I bought at garage sales for like a buck. Fallout Two was released in nineteen ninety eight mm. by Interplay. Mm-hmm. So what happened to Interplay? So I don't know if you guys have heard this, but Battlefield nineteen forty three. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'll talk about Fallout Two now. No, no, come on, Battlefield. You played it? Good. Was no, it was just a trailer. Yeah, I didn't play the trailer. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, but how looks, did you watch it? If you, you didn't did read it, the podcast, it looks exactly like Battlefield 1942, which is awesome. That is I good. had forgotten how much fun that game was Definitely. until I saw the trailer. 1942 was such an awesome game, so much fun. Choke points, all that stuff. It, First it, game it to do vehicles so right. Yep, and FPS. I mean, they 
It was a fantastic game. And it's going to be $15 on Xbox Live. Really? Yeah. It comes, wow. out, it comes out next month. Yeah. Bernie's looking it up right now. Yeah, I'm Check looking at the trailer, trailer right now. I'm playing it here in the background. You can probably hear it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's on Battlefield1943.com. So is Battlefield1943 going to have more maps, that, or is it just going to be Iwo Jima? I think it's just Iwo Jima. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was a great map, and that's... Yeah, that's like uh, that's what the, I mean, that the was, demo was. That was the was whole. Iwo Jima. That was even when we had the game. That's all we played. No, I think you guys are confusing Iwo Jima with Wake Island. Oh, Wake you're Island, right. Wake right. Island. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, Wake Wake Island was the cool map. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Iwo Jima was up the hill, and that was not as much fun. I didn't think so. Yeah. Maybe this is just you know they're using the name because it's more recognizable than Wake Island. Right. Right. So, man, what a what a fun game though. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? I, found a, I heard, read a funny story that I can't do. The Vulcan greeting. I can't. Whether you split your fingers, I can't do it. I've never been able to do it, and it was a lot more popular when I was a kid. I cannot do that, mm-hmm. and it turns out Zachary Quinto can't do it either. Like he looks just like Spock, but apparently he can't really do the one eyebrow thing, and he can't do the Vulcan greeting where he splits his fingers. And so their solution was on the set. They glued his fingers together. Really? Yeah, they glued his index finger to his middle finger and his ring finger to his pinky finger so that he could do the salute. Well, I mean, I don't sense. know if it's something you can learn if you just can't do it. Wow. Yeah, I can't do it. It's I like, can't, you're, you're, you're either double-jointed or you're not double-jointed. When, 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 you're trying yeah. to, when you're trying to do it, it looks like you have rheumatoid arthritis. Well, it's it painful. does. It's See, like, the only thing I can do is I can go forward with it, but I can't go sideways. Making some kind of a weird claw. Weird gang sign, it yeah. looks like. I don't know what that is. What's up, What's up bitches? <laughs> and then, uh, uh, what else do we need to talk about? Anything else at all? Could they? Did they glue his eyebrow? Can they fix that with tape, maybe, in the next movie? They, see, they CG'd it. Yeah, they probably just <laughs> fixed that stuff in post. Uh, Terminator's coming out not this week, but next week? Yeah. What do you think? I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah. it, but I just realized that that movie's PG-13 and not rated R. Yeah. But you know what? I was watching Lost last night, and a dude got a, a stick of rebar shoved through his chest. So, mm. oh, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's television. Dude, Lost had that episode where the dude went off the... Uh... Off the balcony, and they showed it. That yeah. was crazy. He, uh, another dude with the same episode. I'm pretty sure where uh, Saeed threw a dude into a dishwasher full of knives. It's the same scene, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know how they get away with that stuff anymore. So who knows what PG-13 is? You know what PG-13 will mean is that we can get some, see someone's head get chopped off, but the girl can't take off her top. Is basically what that yeah, means. Yeah, probably. You know the American system, the way we do mm-hmm. ratings here. I, I read that. Uh, yeah, they cut the uh, the nude scene with the lead female actress in Terminator Salvation. Bryce Howard. <laughs> Who's, I don't know who Bryce Howard uh, is. Yeah. That's Ron Howard's girl. She was in Lady in the Water. Oh, another one. I, I was some blood good or something. Was her name? Oh, okay. Bri- oh, okay. Bryce Howard. That's the uh, she was in the village and uh, she was Gwen. She's probably more famous for the uh, she had the huge Christian racket. Bale rant uh. of uh, God damn it, man! Bryce is in the scene. I'm like, what's he doing back there? <laughs> Bryce is the name of the actress, not the okay. guy walking around going la da 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 da. She's a she's a chick with a huge rack in Star and Spider Man Three. Oh yeah, she plays Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Oh uh, okay okay. Um the uh the the thing about the the trailer for Terminator, which bothers me and it really bothers me a lot, is they're setting up a weird premise of there's this guy who's with them who's apparently fights alongside them as a Terminator. Yes. Right. And there's that scene where. Bryce Howard is operating on the guy. She goes, let's see what we've got here. And then she apparently opens him up and freaks out. And she has a line saying, we've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, they have. Because they've seen the Terminators. I mean, it's still John Connor. He still had his past the way he had it as a kid. He's still seen the Terminators. I'm sure he told everyone, yeah, hey, eventually they're going to create these things where... It might be the first time they'd seen it. Like, it might not have happened yet. But John Connor saw him as a kid. Right, but those were from the future future. Like, they're just in the future. But he knows they're going to make but, them. But there's one they person that knows some... that. They, they, they've still never seen right, it. Right, they've still never seen it. It's he the first told time them about that it. they've really encountered it, like, in battle. She says, literally, we've never seen They're, they're all shocked. Because they hadn't seen it. Only John Connor's seen it. And then but they realize. There, he's but I know, he's but that's seen the, it. They realize that that's the point where they are in history. Like, oh, this is where the shit happens. It's like, for instance. No, no, the no. The first time when you're like nine Watch and your trailer. friend tells you about boobs and you're like, that sounds whatever. And then you see him for the first time <laughs> and you're like, you weren't prepared. Watch the trailer. There's genuine shock. Not like, oh, this is the thing that we knew was always coming that they were going to make. And even like this premise of these big machines that are picking up people. That they're taking apparently them to make some kind of like they're growing flesh. That's like hinted at in the trailer. We like, don't even know what she sees in there. Maybe there's organs and stuff. Right. It could Maybe be it's a, different. It definitely could be a bad edit from the trailer. Right. It could be like the guys like trying to set it up, but they're definitely 
The trailer definitely sets up the premise like, here's the first Terminator that looks like a person, a first machine that looks mm-hmm. like a person, and we're totally unprepared for this. But John Connor, that's the one thing he knows about the future <laughs> is that they're going to make these machines. And so it's, it's this weird, like, suspension of disbelief that John Connor and these people, these rebels, wouldn't know that these things are coming. We don't know what happened between Terminator 3 and 4, though. What if he, like, fell and hit his head on a rock <laughs> and got amnesia? <laughs> what if it's a clone of John Connor <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't have go. all the memories? Go back and watch the trailer for Terminator Salvation and take it from the premise of John Connor definitely knows what a Terminator is, definitely knows that there's machines covered in flesh and look like people, and then the trailer makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Well, also, the, the the Terminators he ran into, and I'm, I'm just getting into semantics here. Okay. They didn't think they were people. That's true. They. It also seems like in this trailer, this thing doesn't know that it's a Terminator. But, that it's it thinks it's a person. But they did try to infiltrate into groups of people and disguise themselves as people. That's that was true. the original purpose. That of was them. their yeah. Mm, so the while point. they're surprised maybe that this guy doesn't know that he's a Terminator, like John Connor's lines in the trailer indicate that. That he doesn't know he's a Terminator, that's a kind of a new twist. But the whole thing of, like, that one of our people could be a machine in hiding, that would be, like, that'd be the one thing you'd be ready for. Like, that's the, my crazy mom, the one thing she told me that was right was that the machines do become, you know, sentient, and they disguise themselves as people. They should have figured it out when he was drinking antifreeze in the fucking lunchroom. (laughs) It didn't make any sense. That'd be great if, like, they were in a battle. It's like, the machines machines are fighting us. We've never seen this before. It's like, we saw this just last week. We fought (laughs) machines. It's like, maybe everything is new to this guy. Oh, man. Okay, what else is on the list? Anything else to talk about? No. No? No. You sound angry. (laughs) No. Jeff's been been not into this, I could tell, the entire time. No, I'm into it. No, he hasn't been into it the entire time. totally into it. He was really into the lost stuff. I was really into Battlefield 1943. (laughs) You got cut off? I cut off 19 times. Okay, so let's talk talk some more about Fallout 3. How far? (laughs) Is there anything you want to talk about, Jeff? No. (laughs) No, you're out of it? I, uh... Wait, aren't you going on vacation or something? I Oh, I should take this opportunity to tell you that I'm going on vacation. I've changed my dates and location again. So now I'm going on vacation from the 25th to the 30th again. You, Just so you know. Of May? Yes, of May. In you two, come in, in every weeks. week, you tell me you're taking a vacation, and yeah. it's different every time you tell me. It's true. You're like the John Connor of vacation time, <laughs> basically. You can't My remember. Vacation. We've already had this conversation, and it's slightly different, but not that different. You can take your vacation whenever you want. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's fine. All right, well, that does it. Gus, give us a theme song. Get us out of here. We've had laughs. We've had fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>